here. And then, so Gregory, I just want to say uh, good evening and thank you very much for joining us virtually here in the Twin Cities for this uh, tasting of your amazing wines. Uh, we really appreciate the time that you're going to spend with us today. Good evening, all. How are you? And so I'm going to make you the host, and uh, you can, you're, you'll be in charge. You can, uh, I, I'll have a few questions. You need to uh, to activate the sharing of the of the screen. Well, after I make you the host, you can share the, your screen. Yeah. Okay. So you're now the host. Okay. okay. It's okay. You can see uh, it. Okay. Yes. Beautiful. Uh, so uh, perhaps we, uh, I would like to to, to start with a, a general presentation uh, about uh, Chablis. Uh, so first, uh, what is uh, very interesting to to have in mind is uh, where is located uh, Chablis. Uh, Chablis is in Burgundy. It's uh, in the, uh, it, but it's located in the north uh, west of uh, Burgundy. We are between Beaune and Paris. That means it's uh, 150 kilometers uh, uh, south uh, east from uh, from Paris. It's a very important point because it's one of. Uh, of the uh, key point of the of the terroir of Chablis is the microclimate. That means we are uh, we are no first uh, than than Bonn. It's why we, we the, the climate of Chablis is so specific in uh, in uh, in Burgundy. We we have I, uh, four. May I interrupt quickly and yeah. ask a question? So on on this map, where is Loire? Where is the Eastern part of the Loire. It is, it's just north of Chablis, right? Where? where? The Loire Valley. The Loire Valley. Yeah. It's the west. It's the west. Okay, and Ch and Champagne is even east. north of Paris, east. right? But it's east, and uh, very important uh, uh, question. We are 150 kilometers north uh, uh, west from Beaune, but we are only 50 kilometers uh, west from the south of Champagne, from La Côte des Barres. That means it's why there is a specific link between uh, Chablis and, and Champagne in terms of salt, but also in terms of uh, history. Between during the Middle Age, Chablis was uh, 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 sh shared in, in two parts. One part uh, was owned by the uh, Duc de Bourgogne, and the other uh, by the uh, Duc of uh, Champagne. And that means it's uh, a central. Uh, uh, Chablis was a, a central point between Burgundy and uh, and Champagne. Do you think? But we are. Do you think Chablis should be considered part of Burgundy? Yeah, of course. Yes. Yes. In, in terms of uh, in terms of history, uh, in terms of uh, uh, of varieties, uh, in terms of uh, of soils, uh, in terms of culture, we we don't do any uh, sparkling in Champagne. It's a it's a culture of sparkling, and I think it's. Uh, the notion of 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 terroir is so uh, complex and shabby. You know the the uh, the uh, whole area of uh, of of uh, of Chabli is located in a, in the administrative uh, area of Bourgogne. Though, so that means there is Chabli is in uh, in Burgundy, it, but it's a part of uh, a specific part of uh, of the Burgundy. But the soil in Chablis is more similar to that in Champagne than it is to the Cote de Bone, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. That's it. But 
But you know, the, in, in the notion of of, the, of terroir, it's not only the geological geological formation of the soil. It's also human uh, uh, traditions, it's culture, it's microclimate. There, there is many many parameters. It's why I think we we have a link with Champagne, but we are uh, included in in Burgundy with all the specificities. You know, uh, uh, the Maconnais is in uh, in Burgundy, but the uh, Macon area is so specific and so different if we compare with uh, with Côte de Nuit. So, yeah. okay. Well, so I... in, and, and you can see that uh, to to directly give a link with uh, uh, the the, the uh, how is uh, granite uh, uh, Chablis. We have four levels of appellation. We have Petit Chablis. Chablis, Chablis Premier Cru, and Chablis, Chablis Grand Cru. That means the range is done as in Burgundy. It's why we, you can see that the story and, uh, of Chablis is done as the rest of, of, uh, of Burgundy. Right. Total area, uh, it's uh, almost uh, more than uh, uh, 5,000 uh, hectares. It's uh, eight. It's a one thousand hectares of Ch of Petit Chablis. It's three thousand five hundred hectares of Chablis in different uh, villages all around uh, Chablis. Chablis Premier Cru uh, represents uh, seven uh, hundred and eighty hectares, and uh, Chablis Grand Cru is uh, only one hundred hectares. It's why it's so specific and so intimist. Are you saying acres or hectares? Hectares. Hectares. So hectares. 100 hectares is 250 acres. That's it. Yeah. So it's tiny. <laughs> I mean, my family yeah. owns my family owns a farm in Kentucky that is twice the size of Grand Cru Chablis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah. just, I, will you I promise you can plant just one more interruption. Um, I would encourage everybody joining us to pour themselves a glass of the Chablis now to enjoy while we're while you're talking. So, some other key points, key figures about Chablis. Uh, you have some. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, more than thirty percent of the total production of white wines in uh, in Burgundy. Second thing, it's only Chardonnay. And if you try to plant another variety in Chablis, or Sauvignon, or Pinot Noir, you lost the right to uh, label uh, your wine and to uh, Chablis. So it's why it's 100% of, uh, of Chardonnay in Chablis. It's why Chablis is uh, so specific uh, for for this uh, variety of, of wine. So that means, first, where Chablis is located, so continental, two, only Chardonnay, and uh, three very important points of uh, in terms of characteristic, it's the soil. The name of the soil is Kimmeridgian. It's uh, 150 million years old uh, uh, soils. What is specific, because at this time, we, we had an, uh, an, uh, a sea in Chablis. That means it's a sedimentary uh, soil. And what is so, so, uh, so nice, you can find inside in the, in the soil, in the limestone, you can, you can uh, uh, find very small fossils of, uh, of oyster. The name of these uh, uh, small uh, fossils is Exogira virgula. And uh, so it's... Uh, it's very specific of, uh, of Chablis. When I say it's continental, what it means? Continental, there is two specific things. That means you have a cold uh, winter, warm summer, but so it's some generality. We, we can see uh, this point, a lot of point in the, uh, in the, in the earth. But what is so specific? from Chablis, it's a huge variations we have 
between the nights and the days in two very important points uh, in the growth. First, during the, uh, the spring equinox, that means end of March, beginning of April, it's all with such huge variations between uh, nights and, uh, and days. We lost a lot of uh, degrees during the, the night and uh, we, uh, we, we have some frost uh, disaster and damages uh, usually uh, during the, uh, the, the, the spring. We can see uh, some pictures of how we can uh, fight uh, the frost. First, we, we use some candles, but it costs a lot. You need 500 uh, candles per hectare for one night. So that means you need a lot of people uh, on the on the field uh, to uh, to light it. A lot of uh, so it takes a lot of time. And what we have, it's a specific uh, things we find, uh, especially in the septentrional uh, vineyards. It's uh, we, we we spray water. And how it works with the spray, that means you create a cocoon of, uh, of ice uh, all around uh, the buds. And with the, the, this cocoon of ice protect the uh, buds, that means the, the future crop against uh, the, 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 the uh, very low uh, degrees of uh, temperature. It's so specific, it works a lot. Uh, it works well. And at Chablis, we use it uh, since the end of the 70s. And um, so uh, it's for me. I think this will yeah. be surprising to a lot of people who watch this, watch our conversation, that, the, that you would spray, basically spray the vines with ice or water, which forms yeah. ice to protect them from the cold. But the, the effect is that the ice doesn't go below 32 degrees Fahrenheit, no matter how cold it gets outside the ice. So it actually does protect the vine because it, it won't get any colder than the ice, correct? Exactly. It's like, uh, it's like uh, uh, an igloo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's great. I love that. Um, <laughs> did you have? I know there was a lot of frost damage in Burgundy in general this year. Did you have yeah. a, a lot of frost this year? Did you lose much of your crop to frost this year? Yeah, we we we, we lost it almost fifty percent of uh, of a normal crop. Uh, some producers uh, lost it uh, more, uh, but what is very interesting, we, we, we have seen two systems to protect and to fight the frost, but also we have an adaptation, other adaptations, uh, it's uh, the human practices. That means what we do, we, we prune the, at La Roche, what is so specific, we prune in two times the vineyard. It takes a more time. But with this, with this, uh, with this uh, novel, uh, what we can do, we delay the starts of the growth. And when you delay the starts of the growth, you, uh, you limit the uh, risk uh, of frost. It's a very old uh, uh, practice in Chablis, and it works. But that means you need a lot of people. It needs a lot of observations, and you need that means you uh, start to prune to uh, prune very late in the season. That means at La Roche in 2000 uh, in April uh, uh, 21, we didn't have finished. Uh, the, the, the final uh, pruning. Some people uh, finished uh, two uh, two months uh, before. So, but it's it works. I think it it was uh, 
a very interesting adaptation uh, from human to uh, the global warming and to the uh, the risk of uh, microclimate and 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 for, of uh, of frost. But uh, we can say this continental situation it's uh, bad things in terms of frost during the spring. But there is also uh, uh, very interesting things with this uh, continental situation. We, we find the same conditions of huge variations between nights and days during the September. And September is usually the month of frightness in Chablis. And you can imagine when you have cold uh, nights, uh, end of, uh, of, uh, of summer, it's September, that means you'll keep all the freshness, all the acidity, all the RMS in the berries during the ripening. Uh, during the ripening. It's uh, one of the facts and uh, of one of the reasons why shall be so specific and why with uh, the Chardonnay, the Chimeridian, and this uh, uh, continental situation, we have uh, such revelation of uh, and pure revelation and pure expression of uh, of the Chardonnay. It's unique, and I think it's uh, one of the reasons why. So in, in spring we are like this. It's not good because we we lost very often a lot of crop. But in September, at least, it's uh, our uh, best uh, 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 colleague. To, to walk and to 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 have good fruits, so it's uh, it's very nice to to have this uh, in mind. So we did uh, a global presentation of uh, of Chablis. I think now what is interesting to have in mind it's uh, to uh, to know uh, uh, where is uh, uh, Domaine La Roche. I say where is because uh, what is important in an estate. It's not only the technical practices, it's a philosophy. And the philosophy, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's complex because it's a huge legacy. It's what we, we have from a, a, a lot of generation at La Roche from the Middle Age, but also what we can transmit to the other generation and what we can transmit all over, what we can spray all over uh, uh, the, the, the state, uh, but also in the appellation and all over the world. Uh, it's why the, the philosophy is so uh, important. So where we are, we are located in Chablis. Our roots are in Chablis from the Middle Age. We, are, we have a huge legacy. That means it's more than 90 hectares all around the appellation with 12, 12 the best 12 premier cru of Chablis and four uh, different uh, grand cru. One uh, of uh, the wine we are going to taste after called Saint Martin because Saint Martin uh, <coughs> is a very important uh, people guy for uh, for the religions but also for Chablis and for the main La Roche. So. Uh, our uh, uh, building, where our cellars, where we we uh, 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 do uh, and make the, 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 the wines for our premier cru and grand cru, uh, l'obédience de Chablis uh, was during the Middle Age the monk's house, and we are uh, in the center of the old village of Chablis. We are just in front of the church uh, Saint Martin. During the, early, the Middle Age, the relics of uh, Saint Martin were hidden uh, in the cellars of Domaine La Roche in l'obédiencerie. You can imagine that during a, a decade, Saint Martin, the relics of Juan Martin, was pride, and we, we had a lot of people from all over France but also all over the Europe, came in Chablis and at Domaine La Roche for, for Saint-Martin. 
And at this time, Chablis started to be well known. Keep in mind also that during the first century, the Roman legionary spread the uh, vineyard uh, uh, management culture in France, in Gaul, but the, the, the knowledge, uh, the know uh, of the climate of each block uh, in, in Burgundy was developed by the monks, the Cistercian uh, uh, monks, and Chablis at this time uh, was developed by the uh, monks of, uh, of Pontigny, Pontigny, the second uh, sisters of uh, the Moine de Cito. That means it's a, there is a very, very strong legacy and a very strong uh, 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 history at, uh, at, uh, at Domaine uh, La Roche. You have a picture, Gregory? Right? Uh, yep. Last question. I've never thought about this, but a lot of the history of, of uh, Burgundy is, and, and wine in Europe in general, is uh, tied up with the church. A lot of great vineyards were planted uh, by monasteries, by monks. Did the, different, yeah. did the different monasteries cooperate with each other in terms of sharing what they'd learned? Or was it? Comp did they compete with each other and try to keep what they learned a secret? Do you know? No, 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 yeah, yeah, I understand. So uh, during this time, it was uh, all the monastery uh, monast of uh, Cito worked together. Yeah. It was uh, the same communion, the same knowledge. They used at this time the same uh, press. You will see later. Uh, the, we, we, at Domaine La Roche, we have the oldest estate in Burgundy. It's the same at Domaine La Roche as uh, Le Clos de Vougeau. That means it's the same knowledge, the same, uh, uh, the same oak. So that means it was uh, the, the, the same winemaking process. That means he, during this time, uh, a lot of uh, sharing during the, uh, the Cistercian monks. Okay, well, thank you. So I, uh, I, so, learn, I knew I would learn a lot today. That, that's part of it. <laughs> so you, you have a picture from, uh, from Le, Grand Cru Les Clos with, uh, with uh, the uh, church uh, Saint Martin, beautiful church. And uh, so very nice. And so a new, uh, and another, Picture of l'obédiencerie de, de Chablis. Uh, it was uh, during the Middle Age the birthplace of Chablis wines. Some pictures of our cellars. Uh, we we uh, already uh, uh, we continue to use it, and I think it's very important because in the philosophy and in the wines there is also. We need to have uh, something with uh, an, uh, the energy, the vibrations. And I think uh, like a huge fermenters. And I think it's very important. There is something different with the Domaine La Roche wines. It comes, uh, of course, from where uh, the uh, wines are, are, are done. Other pictures, you are uh, you are in the uh, in the cellars of the Men La Roche. We we are. It's a huge, huge uh, press from the 13th uh, century, and exactly the same that we we can see at uh, uh, at Claude Vougeau. So that means the 13th century uh, was uh, the uh, the century of the uh, Cistercian uh, monks. Uh, so, what we do, uh, the philosophy, it's how we do our jobs. That means it's not only uh, uh, a technical itinerary. Uh, what we do, it's more a global view 
uh, about our uh, uh, activity. And from now, more than 15 years, we don't use any herbicides. We use biopesticides. Uh, we, we are uh, certified. We were the first in Chablis to be certified with an, uh, a, a specific label. The name is uh, uh, High Environmental Value, uh, High Environmental Value Certification. And it because of all our agroecological uh, princi uh, principles. It's very important because it's, uh, that means we, we take care of many things. We, we take care of, uh, of the biodiversity, of course, we are, we are going to see it, but also we take care of many parameters, how many oil we use, uh, the human resources, uh, the impact we have also uh, with our activity on the, on the direct environment. So we, we have created uh, a specific uh, uh, a partnership with, uh, with the uh, Birds Protection Association. Since 2012, uh, we, uh, we started uh, a very uh, important plan of uh, plantation of, uh, of ages, ages with different varieties uh, of uh, of, uh, of flowers, of, uh, of trees. And I think it's very important because we, with this, first, it's, it's nice for the, for the ice, because if not, you have only a, a vineyard. And I think it's, uh, we need to have a specific rhythm for the landscape, and I, so it works well. And also, it goes because you, you, you create a huge uh, 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 microsystem of uh, uh, biodiversity. Uh, what we do is so specific, you know, we, we need also uh, some pillars in our philosophy. And one of the big pillars was to take care of uh, the environment. That means it's where we are. And more specifically, one of the, the second pillars of our philosophy, it's how we can take care of the soil. And the soil is a very complex uh, biosystem because there is a lot of uh, people who work in the soil. It's uh, very fragile. Uh, so what we do, uh, we work after the harvest. Uh, we, uh, we, 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 we uh, sow different seeds. That means it's a mix of, of seeds. We, uh, we, we, we uh, sow some uh, leguminous uh, with, uh, and so uh, gramini. And with such seeds, that means we create a specific cover during the, the, the fall and the, during the winter. With this uh, uh, cover, first we, we, we protect the soils against the erosion during the winter the frost, the wind, the, the rain, which that means we protect what is very fragile in surface of the soil. Also with the, the different uh, uh, roots of the, uh, of, the, of the plants, of the advantages we, we, we plant, we have like, we create uh, an oxygenation, aeration of the soil. That means it's, war, it, it, it's very nice for, uh, all the uh, microorganisms uh, in the soil. And uh, also with the leguminous, we, fix, we, we, we cut the nitrogen from the atmosphere. And then during the, in the next uh, spring, when we uh, plow the soil, we integrate the leaves of the leguminous in the soil. And it works than the green manure. So that means it's, many, it's very complex. To be honest, it's, uh, you don't have the result uh, the, the, the day of the year after to start. We started these practices uh, in 2012, and now we can see since, uh, since uh, two, the two uh, last vintages that we have a real impact with first the quality of the, of the berries, of our Chardonnay, but also we can, it's a visual thing, how the, uh, our vines uh, are in well balance in, the, in the, the soil. That means that we have more 
uh, hydric retention during the summer. That means uh, the, the roots of uh, our vines uh, uh, are uh, less uh, stressed than it was before on than it is for the other uh, vigneron with uh, not uh, such practices. That means it's a, a very slow uh, process, but it's one also, it's a one of the adaptation we have found at the Main La Roche to uh, adapt ourselves uh, against uh, uh, global warming. Uh, third pillars of the Main La Roche, and we are very proud uh, about this. So, second, it, it was a soil, and then the third pillar is, is what is important, it's uh, the vine. That means we, we say it's uh, uh, the material, uh, which uh, is so specific. As you know, if you do a, a statistic in, uh, in the vineyard in uh, all the world, it's 99% of clone because uh, after the phylloxera and since the 70s, uh, the number of hectares planted all over the world, it's uh, so incredible. So that means we work with clones. And the problem of the clones, so first, it's a poor genetic selection. And first, it's not rustic. What we do at Domaine La Roche, you can imagine, uh, with more than uh, uh, 1,000 years of uh, history, we have a huge patrimony of, uh, of vines, of old vines. And what is so specific with our old vines, it's a very old uh, genetical selection done by the other and the, uh, uh, the, 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 the previous generations. Why it's, um, uh, our, this selection is more rustic with our old vines? First, there is more resistance against the hydric stress because it's uh, more rustic, more adapted against, uh, against uh, very strong conditions, against frost and against uh, hydric stress during summer. Other things, what is very interesting with such old uh, genetic old selection, it's there is more resistance against the disease. That means you, you need less uh, uh, treatments, you spray less, uh, less products. That means you, you use also uh, uh, less oil, and uh, so it's good for, for the uh, environment. And the difference between old uh, genetic old selection and the clone is in terms of uh, characteristics. That means uh, phenologic characteristics. If you taste the uh, clone, the seed is very small. There is a large pulp with a lot of juice, and the skin is very thin, very fragile. If you taste the Chardonnay from an old vine, from an old genetic old selection done by the, uh, the other uh, and the previous generations with a lot of knowledge, the skins are more uh, sick. That means there is more natural antioxidant, there is more phenolics, there is more mineral compounds. That means there is more structure for the future uh, uh, wine. And it's why it's so specific. So what we have done at the Roche since 2012, we have selected two specific blocks. One is the Grand Cru Les Blanchots, and the other in the premier cru, uh, Le Mort, more than 70 years old vines. And we have done a selection plant by plant. And after three years, we have selected only uh, so several uh, plants to do another multiplication. That means it's a very long time job. We started to replant with uh, the baby of this selection with the uh, old genetical patrimony in 2018. And we can see already the result, but this, this, uh, this work is done for the next generation. It's why, as I said at the beginning, the philosophy 
if you have a legacy, but also you need to have a reflection to transmit it. It's not a payback for today or for the day after. And I think it's very important to have this uh, in mind. It's uh, this, uh, this transmission and the uh, power of the pillars of uh, philosophy. And it's what we, we have at, uh, at, uh, at Domaine La Roche. Uh, other things, so it's more for the commercial and uh, uh, things, but we, we are, in terms of business, uh, we are concentrated uh, in the Eureka. Our wines are dedicated for the uh, restaurants, for the hotels, for the good sellers. And we have huge partnership uh, all over the, the world with uh, L'Hôtel du Louvre, uh, with uh, l'Elysée, uh, with uh, Le Gavroche uh, in London, uh, in the Br Britannia, in Norway, <coughs> all over the world. And also we have uh, a huge partnership uh, with some uh, beautiful uh, uh, company airways, as Emirates or so Singapore Airlines. So that means it's uh, we, 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 we sell our wines in more than uh, 50 uh, countries. Uh, and uh, it's like this for now many uh, decades. So it's what we, 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 we can do at Domaine La Roche. It's, uh, so each year we, 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 uh, we have a participation uh, in uh, at the New York Wine Experience. Or uh, we can see here uh, Thierry Bellico, our general manager, uh, with the uh, Bocus d'Or. It was it was in uh, in Lyon uh, two weeks uh, ago. So it's uh, what what we have and what we can do with uh, with our uh, uh, wines. So perhaps we, we can start to uh, to taste if you want. Yes, we, we have so. Uh, three wines for me it's three emblematic wines at uh, uh, at La Roche and for La Roche uh, first it's Saint Martin uh, so I explained before why Saint Martin is so important for the main La Roche and why Saint Martin is so important for uh, for, uh, for for Chablis so that means there is a uh, a, a very strong link be, be, before this, for this, and uh, it's why uh, it's uh, we celebrate at the Main La Roche uh, Saint Martin uh, each year. We own 60 hectares in the best part, the best blocks of the appellation, and for the harvest we separate each block. That means you can imagine. We do, we pick this one, we stop, we, 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 we pick this one. And in the cellar, we have a huge separation in the press, but also during the winemaking process for the meat fermentations, but also for the aging for each block. What we do every year, it's uh, usually it's in May, we put all the samples uh, on uh, her very, uh, all the stone table in the cellar, and we do a, a blind tasting. For Saint Martin, we select the best blocks. That means Saint Martin is done with the best blocks of Domaine La Roche. It's a blind tasting, and we do a drastic selection. Saint Martin needs to be the key of the entrance of the uh, Domaine La Roche uh, universe. In the Domaine La Roche philosophy, that means it's a, for me it could be the more important wine in terms of precision. When you have les clous or les blanchots, that means it's unique. But the soil is here. With Saint Martin, we need to be in the perfect precision. What is so specific at the, at, uh, with the Saint Martin of Domaine La Roche? First, 19, it's a very unique vintage. Perhaps for me, one of the best vintage uh, from the last uh, uh, 10 years. Uh, low crop, huge energy, a concentration of minority, and the perfect ripeness. That means it's, uh, it's uh, 
you have a lot of uh, spices, you have the uh, white uh, uh, flowers, white blossoms, but also uh, the perfect ripeness of, uh, of, uh, of yellow uh, fruits. In Saint Martin, we done this with a, lot, a large proportion of uh, old vines, and 15% is done in very big cask. The name is Fudo. The food, it's a 55 hectoliters big barrel in oak. It's no new because it's more than uh, 40 years old uh, uh, oak. It's not for the aromas, it's for the respiration of the wine. Like in Champagne, you know, you need to have a pot in stainless steel tanks, but also it works with very large uh, oak uh, contents because you have a respiration and we walk with this, we, we, we walk the, the texture of the wine. It's why for me, Saint-Martin, it's uh, the, the pure expression of Chablis. You have the purity, you have the nose, you can, you can smell the very uh, elegant power of, uh, of limestone. There is like uh, the nose uh, of, the, of the shulk, the very delicate, precision of the, of the fruit. And in the mouth, first, you have the, the energy, the minerality of, uh, of Chablis, but it's more complex than the basic Chablis. That means you have a huge concentration of saltiness. You have a huge concentration of, uh, of texture. That means for me, uh, Saint-Martin is a, a complex wine. And you can have two readings. The first one is could be okay, it's easy to drink. You can pair it with a very fresh uh, salads, with, you know, during a, in a brasserie or, you know, during a lunch. But also, you can pair it with a lot of uh, a large uh, uh, variety of, uh, of foods. It's why I think uh, Saint Martin uh, is a, a very uh, representative. Uh, wines of uh, of Domaine La Roche. I wish I had a plate of Bellona oysters in front of me to yeah eat with this. That would be pretty great. Yeah, all, all the seafoods walks. Uh, so it's ideal with uh, with Chablis and with our wines. Uh, if we continue, if you have some question about Saint Martin, don't hesitate. Well, I just, it's a, I'll just say it's a really, really lovely wine. If you, if you wanted to illustrate to a, somebody starting to learn about wine, what minerality is and what salinity is in white wine, uh, this would be a very, very good illustration of minerality and salinity in white wines. You remember, uh, I mentioned at the beginning of, uh, of our uh, session, I said that it's, uh, it's uh, the Kimmerian soil uh, uh, come from uh, the ocean. And that means when you, you have a glass of Saint Martin, if you close your eyes, it's very easy to imagine. And we don't know why, but there is like a, a, a very incredible link between uh, the seafood be between the ocean and, uh, and the Chablis wines. So that means there is a, a very uh, incredible uh, transmission of the minority from, from the origin of the soil to, uh, to the glass of, uh, of, 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 of wine. Perhaps I think we can say it's a magie of, uh, of Chablis. It's, it's a beautiful wine. Honestly, beautiful. Thank you. So let's talk about Vaillon. Les Vaillons, uh, les Vaillons, we are uh, located, uh, perhaps I, I will uh, find, I have some, I have a picture, you will see a picture. I mentioned before the le, le, foudre for Saint Martin. You can see it. Uh, and it's, I think it's one of the secrets also of uh, the complexity of uh, of, uh, of uh, Saint Martin. Uh, you have a map of Chablis, you can see the two banks. 
The Right Bank with the Grand Cru, Fourchaume, Montée de Tonnerre, Mon Milieu, and the Left Bank. Left Bank, one of the most famous premier cru is uh, Levayon. Levayon, as you can see in the, <coughs> uh, in the yellow, in the dark yellow, the premier cru are located in uh, the best uh, slopes, best exposure, but there is a specificity of valley. Each premier cru is located in a specific valley. And in the final notion of terroir, we have the texture of the soil. So that means basically we have limestone, we have clay, but it's more complex than this. That means uh, uh, each block has a specific concentration of limestone, a specific texture of limestone, but also a specific proportion of clay, texture of clay. Some clay are very uh, strong, uh, very uh, heavy, and other uh, clays are more light, are more aerien, and it's why it's so specific. In the Vaillant, the, Vaillant, the, the, uh, <coughs> the identity of the valley is to the, the faculty to ripe very easily the, fr the fruits. Why? Because you have both. There is like a specific microclimate in this valley. Uh, the microclimate, it's you have a, a very uh, complex clay with a good hydric retention. That means we didn't, we don't have any uh, over hydric stress during the ripeness. So that means it's easy for the vine uh, to ripe the fruits. And uh, what we have, that means uh, uh, we in surface we have a lot of uh, concentration of uh, of pieces of uh, of limestone. At Domaine La Roche, it's Levayon des Vignes very old, uh, uh, old uh, vines, very thick skins. And in Levayon, you have the expression of, uh, of the, uh, what we have in terms of uh, soft premier cru. The ripeness is full, but not over full. That means you can imagine the date of harvest is uh, uh, so uh, needs a lot of precision. It's uh, day per day. If we wait one or two days later, it's not the same vintage, it's not the same style of wine. That means we, we need analysis, but also we taste the, the berries. And in the Vaillon, when you taste the wine, you have exactly what we have when we taste the berries. That means you have, we, 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 uh, we pick the grapes al dente in the Vaillon. If not, if we wait the day after, we, are, we will be too... Uh, to fat, overripe, with exotic fruits, we lost too much, uh, too much uh, acidity. And uh, Levayon 19, you can see it's an expression of uh, of a shulk, but you know the rock you you you, uh, uh, you you flint, and it's exactly what you have with the Levayon Vieivin. It's the expression of uh, of the Chardonnay, of a, a very beautiful premier cru. With a concentration of uh, of the of the of the rock, uh, with the spices also because there is a lot of uh, oriental uh, uh, spices. It's why it's so complex. And in the in the mouth, you can taste the concentration of the skins. That means the uh, old uh, genetical patrimony. You can taste the concentration of phenolics of antioxidant. And uh, uh, the finish is so concentrated. That means you have both. You have the minerality, the acidity, but also the power of a huge terroir uh, in, uh, in Chami. It's, it's a powerful wine. It, it uh, is so intensely saline. It's rich. You know, some Chablis are so acidic that you think the winemaker in the pursuit of acid in the wine forgot to make enjoyable wine. And the, these wines, the balance of fruit and acidity and minerality is pretty much perfect. In these first two wines, is pretty much perfect. 
So you, it, your observation is right. It's so because we we have a lot of people each day in the vineyard. That means to do these wines, you need to have powerful and concentrated uh, berries. Uh, pick at the good days and at the good moment with a lot of precision. It's under harvested. You can imagine the precision of the cellar, but we need, and uh, it's, uh, uh, I'm very uh, happy with your reflection. Uh, a white wine is not a basic wine with only acidity and uh, like a water with acidity. A white wine need to be complex, need to have a texture, need to have phenolic compounds. And I think with Le Vaillon, it's a good representation. So that for sure, it's not the, the concentration of tannins that you can have uh, with uh, in a Californian uh, cab, but you can imagine that there is a texture of the phenolic compounds of the original concentration of the berries. And it's why with such wines, you need to, you have a, 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 a bottle to be, uh, to have the capacity to be kept in your cellar for 30, 40 or, or more uh, years. It's why there is a concentration. And I think it's uh, this type of wine now, it's not uh, the, in terms of fashion currently, because we need to acidic wine, very basic, so over filtered. And so it's a wine, a glass of wine uh, to be drink immediately. But I think for people who like uh, uh, the wines, if you take time, you can see that there is uh, two readings. You need to be pure and precise, but also you need to have uh, asperity, and you have you need to have some reliefs uh, in the in the mouth. And yeah. I think it's what we do at Domaine La Roche. It's uh, to have uh, asperity uh, as in our wines. We had one of these conversations with another well-known Chablis winemaker who told us that um, when his father passed away, his father's best friend brought a bottle of 1947 Chablis Les Clos from their winery to uh, honor his father's passing. It was 50 years old and perfect, perfect at 50 years old. I imagine, so it's-, it's It helps it's in why, uh, <laughs> There was a lot of great wine made in France in 1947, but uh, uh, yeah. yeah, everywhere pretty much, but it, you know, 50 it, it year was old Le it was Leclou? It was Leclou from Christian Moreau. From his father, his father's. Yeah. So it was a, a, a very good uh, memory. Yeah, and probably <laughs> stored somewhere really cold. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's talk about the Blanc Show. Yeah. So you have a, a picture of uh, Arian picture of uh, of Les Grands Crus. <clears throat> you can see uh, where is uh, uh, les, les Blanchots. So in the uh, le, the left part of uh, Les Blanchots, it's Les Clos. You know the the central part of the the hill in form of uh, amphitheater. It's uh, Les Clos. Les Blanchot, it's what is so specific in Les Blanchot that means it's a, a, an east exposure. You are just in front of uh, La Montée de Tonnerre, that means there is this notion of valley. The uh, north wind can uh, cross this valley. And the soil of Les Blanchot is so specific. Les Blanchot, the name of Les Blanchot uh, comes from the color of the soil. It's a white marl. What is a white marl? A white marl, it's a white pasta. It's uh, the lay, the up, up part of the, it's a, a, a lay between the clay and the rock. That means it's a, a, 
a, a clay of transition between the clay and uh, and the rock and uh, it's like a white pasta it's a beautiful uh, uh, powder of chalk in a, in a clay what we can see you will, uh, the total of les blanchot represents less than 12 hectares at domaine la roche we uh, we own more than uh, 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 f four that means we are the most uh, important producer in Les Blanchot, but what I think what's interesting, it's not the most important in terms of uh, of size, but in terms of uh, representative of Les Blanchot, that you can see that we are in the uh, eastern part of Les Blanchot, in the western part of Les Blanchot, upper part, center, central part, and uh, down part of, uh, of Les Blanchot. Uh, we separate each block, uh, what I can say, because I think to the tasting it's important, but if you now you have a vision of uh, of the of the slope of the east exposure, that means uh, more more important sun in the uh, in the in the morning, the wind, the north wind, the soil. But in terms of characteristic, even we have a lot of uh, old uh, vines in the Blanchot, It's uh, always very elegant and delicate. It's not a powerful wine. I, I say it's not powerful. It's not large. It's not demonstrative. But for me, the, the nose of uh, of Le Blanchot, it's exactly the nose we, we have during the spring. You can imagine you you have the, the, the first blossoms, the first flowers in the edges, in the fields during the spring. It's so elegant. You have some uh, very fresh nuts of acacia, aubépine, but also you have, you know, some nuts of uh, the very fresh underwood. If you keep these bot the, the bottles 15 years more in your cellar, I think you can have some uh, expression of, uh, of fried truffle. It's exactly what we have. And in the, the, the in the the mouth, it's exactly the, the same. You can taste the, the the powder of limestone, like the powder of chalk. It's uh, it's not concentrated in in uh, uh, in phenolics. It's concentrated in mineral. That means it's uh, the purity, but a very long, long, long purity of wine. Uh, I, I love the 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 blanchot. And uh, perhaps less demonstrative and powerful if we compare with Le Clos, but I, I love this uh, this concentration of minerality. The Bayon is more powerful than the yeah. Blanchot because the, more the, elegant. Yeah, because the 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 texture of the wine uh is done with uh, the soil and in the in the levayon the, the clay is more strong when you, you taste know, the berries you can see gregory do you know alan meadows yeah he i asked him once we i've known alan a long time i think i was the third person to sign up on his website years ago and back then you could email him and ask him questions because he wasn't so important but um, I asked him one time, what do you consider the, the top Grand Cru of Chablis? Uh, well, I think I asked him, do you consider Le Clos the best Grand Cru of Chablis? And he, he said that people, most people think of Le Clos um, as the top Grand Cru of Chablis because it's the largest and it's the one you see around, the, you see bottles of the most. But in his opinion, Blanchot makes the year in, year out, makes the more compelling wines. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I think so. I think uh, uh, so. In 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 uh, in Niclo, you have you 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 have you have both. You have the power, the concentration. When you taste the berries, it's uh, the skins are very often very sick. There is what is so specific at Clicquot, there is it's 27 hectares 
And there is huge variations if you consider the down part of Le Clos and the upper part of Le, of Le Clos. What I can say, it's uh, in the best part, in the down part of Le Clos, you have both, you have the concentration of the clay and the uh, uh, purity, uh, the minerality of the power of, uh, uh, of the stone, of the limestone inside, uh, with create Uh, specific vibration in in uh, in the wine. So for me, it's it's and, and you say when when you take when you take in you, with your hand the soil, you have a specific texture and clue. So I, I asked you for an hour of your time, and I have two minutes left. So I, I have one more question to ask you. Um, and, and please. Uh, would you right now make me the host again? Because otherwise I will lose the recording. <laughs> <laughs> you, make, you make me the yeah. host on Zoom again so that the recording doesn't disappear from my computer. Please. Yeah. It's okay? No. You, you know, click on these three dots and it'll say, or click on my on my three dots and it'll say make point the host. Uh, so, but uh, there is a reset. Uh, I, I need to. Uh, the, if you go to like it? the little screens where like our faces are. Yeah. There's if you hover over Hoyt's face and go up to the top where that little box is with the three dots. Do you see it? If you click on that, it should give you the option to make him the host of the. Uh, there. 